Hey guys, this video is about photosynthesis and cellular respiration and how the two are related. So you've probably heard about photosynthesis before. Photosynthesis is the process where plants convert energy from the sun in the form of light. They convert light energy from the sun into chemical energy that they then use to power themselves. So you've probably heard about that but cellular respiration is the other one that you may not have heard of and that's actually what happens inside of animal cells that kind of undoes the thing that photosynthesis does. So let me explain um, first photosynthesis and then I'll talk about cell respiration. Okay, so once again the two processes that we're talking about are photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Okay, so in photosynthesis, we have energy from the sun, so light energy travels through space and is absorbed by plants like this tree and a couple of other things are going to go into the tree, but we're going to talk about that in just a second. But there's a process that goes on in here called photosynthesis. And as a result of that process, some things are going to get made. And then those things that get made are then going to enter into animals and a process called cellular respiration will happen. And then the stuff that is created as a result of cellular respiration that happens in animals is going to come out and go back in to the plant to start the cycle all over again. So what is it that comes out of plants as a result of photosynthesis? Well, plants release O2, which is oxygen, as a waste product. Just like you breathe out carbon dioxide as a waste product, plants breathe out oxygen as a waste product. So oxygen gets released into the atmosphere. And the second thing called glucose is made. Now you may have not heard of glucose before, but simply put, glucose is a sugar. It's a sugar molecule, which is also to say it is a carbohydrate. Remember, carbohydrates are one of the four biomolecules that we talked about in the past. There's carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Well, this is one of those four. This is a carb, okay, and it's called glucose. Now, the chemical formula for glucose, you may see it written on a test or an exam somewhere as this, C6H12. O6. What that means is that it is a molecule that is made up of six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms all bonded together in a certain combination to create a molecule of glucose. So I drew six C's to represent six carbons. To represent this molecule of glucose. I'm not going to draw the 12 H's or the 6 O's. In reality they're there, but to keep it simple I'm just going to draw the 6 C's. So this is glucose. This is a molecule of glucose. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons big. Okay? And this glucose is going to go into an animal when the animal consumes the plant. It could be you, the animal, or it could be the animal that you eat that consume the plant. 
So whether you're consuming the plant directly or you're consuming the animal that ate the plant, um, it's still, you're getting the same thing, you're just getting it in two different ways. So this glucose is really the thing that you're getting when you consume plants and animals. And this uh, molecule of glucose, however, is pretty big. And so what your body does to try to make it easier to break down and digest is it splits it up. And this is a process that we call glycolysis. So this is actually part of cell respiration, okay? Now cell respiration is down here, but just know that I couldn't draw all this in here, but just know that whatever's going on right here, this process of glycolysis is happening inside of the body. Okay, so during glycolysis, this one six carbon glucose, one, two, three, four, five, six, is split in half into two three carbon molecules, one, two, three, one, two, three. Each three carbon molecule is called pyruvate. It's just glucose, what was glucose, it's been snapped in half. Now, that pyruvate is going to be used by your body to generate three things during the process of cell respiration. This happens inside your cells. The three things that get made from cell respiration are oxygen, H2O, which actually this arrow should be pointing here because trees absorb the water to the roots as we know. Okay. So oxygen and H2O go into the plant, but there's a third thing that gets made by cell respiration. It doesn't go into the plant, your body hangs on to it, this third thing that I'm talking about, and the third thing is ATP. Now, what is ATP? Well, ATP is just energy. So, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. It's the name of a molecule that your body creates during cell respiration, which is the same stuff that happens to make O2 and H2, I'm sorry, I put O2. I just realized I put O2. CO2, CO2 and H2O, sorry. Um, so your body makes the CO2 as waste, which the plant then absorbs, and it makes H2O as waste, which the plant absorbs. But this third thing, the ATP, actually stays in the body. And what this is, is it's just like, uh, the best way to describe ATP is uh, like it's money. This is energy that your body is going to use to operate. But the reason why we have to turn it into ATP is because think of, uh, think of money, think if you have a, have a gold nugget in your hand. Now that gold nugget is worth some money. But if I take it to a store and I try to buy something with a gold nugget, the shopkeeper will probably look at you like, what am I supposed to do with that? I can't accept a gold nugget. In reality, they might take it because you know it might be worth more than however much you actually need to pay them for whatever it is that you're buying. But just stick with the analogy here that gold nugget cannot be accepted by the person who works at the store. Uh, that gold nugget though, however, you can trade it in for cash money and then use that cash money to then buy what you need. So it's still money, it's just money in a different form. Just like ATP is energy, it's just energy in a different form. It started off as glucose, it started off as this kind of energy, but your body has to turn it into a form that it can use. 
so that it can then spend it to operate your body. And that form that your body can actually use, or in other words, the cash money, is ATP. Okay, So your body takes this food, the glucose, converts it into ATP energy, then it can actually use that energy to power the cell and to power your body. Okay, So that stays in the body, but these other two, CO2 and H2O, go into the plant, combined with light energy, the plant performs photosynthesis, oxygen comes out, glucose comes out, you breathe in the oxygen, you consume the glucose, the glucose goes through this process called glycolysis to just be split in half, and then CO2 comes out, H2O comes out, ATP comes out, your body uses the ATP, gets rid of these two, the CO2 and the H2O, the plants then take that in and start the cycle all over again. So that's how the two are related. And the last thing I want to mention is where this happens. Okay, so where exactly in the plant does this happen? Well, in the leaves of plants, if we were to zoom in on the leaf of a plant, this is like a little magnification. I know it's a terrible drawing, but it's all I got. There are these cells in plants that are green. And they're green because they contain chlorophyll, which is a pigment that absorbs sunlight. But the cell that the chlorophyll is in is called a chloroplast. So the chloroplast is the actual location where photosynthesis is happening in the plant. It's just one of the many cells that make up leaves. In cell respiration, cell respiration occurs in the thing that we call, where's a good place to draw this? I guess right here. Oops. I'm trying to make it red. Okay, it's not wanting to turn red. Okay, sorry. If this little thing looks like a peanut with a wavy membrane inside, and that's called the mitochondria. So that's where cell respiration happens. This is one of the many organelles inside of your cells and animals and uh, you as well. I said this was a cell earlier. I'm sorry, the chloroplast is an organelle, not a cell. I didn't have much sleep last night. I'm sorry, I'm a little off today. Chloroplast is an organelle, not a cell. It's inside of a cell, but it is not a cell in itself. Just like the mitochondria is also an organelle. Which, if you remember our um, endosymbiosis theory, um, these have their own DNA, so the chloroplasts, and that's why we think that at some point in the past, these are actually their own independent living cells that got absorbed into a larger cell and became symbiotic with it and evolved together um, over time. So that's just a little tidbit. You don't really need to remember that for this lesson, but. We're just tying all this stuff in together that we've learned in the past. Okay.